Okay. Hey guys, my name's Holly, and this is my husband Ty. Yo. Show yourself. And we own Drabs of Fabs. Well, so. not me, you. Well, <laughs> I own Drabs of Fabs, and my husband now works for me I'm full just time. A slave labor. We have moved from the garage into this beautiful shop, which we need to soon move out of because we are out of space. So, anyhow, I get asked all the time about doing a video for glazing, and so here we are. It's a Friday night, and I was hoping that I would get to go out tonight. Man, so, if you get lucky. We'll see. <laughs> so I'm not going to put my hair up in a bun like I normally do because I always glaze with my hair in a bun or else I have glaze all over my hair. So I'm leaving my hair down. We had two, I have two doors left that I need to finish to finish off this buffet. So I'm hoping to get that done tonight. So I kind of we snuck down here and I'm going to show you guys my how I glaze and what I like to use. So this is what we're going to be doing today. I have these two doors here. <clears throat> this one goes to that gray buffet right there and so this that's, is, a, that's a gray glaze right yeah this is a gray glaze and it's a pretty heavy glaze and so this is the other door it's gonna be upside down but sure got it okay looks good <laughs> all right so we can talk about these two normally that's not that heavy on a cabinet yeah so this is a pretty heavy glaze and it's an all-over glaze when we do cabinet doors, most of the time people just want this pinstripe glaze, so it just kind of highlights it, but doesn't make it look too dirty. Versus just the normal white door. Yeah. White or pinstripe are your most popular, most common of all the glazing. And then when we get into the furniture, the furniture ones are more like that, with a little bit heavier glaze. This one right here is one that you're working on the other day, right? Yeah. What is that one? Just that a one's bit. got a Van Dyke brown it's got a Van glaze Dyke, on it. Van Dyke brown. White. Again, it's white. Brings out a lot of the detail. Okay. What about this piece over there? I'll show that so one. So this fast. one is this one is, a, this one is a lacquer piece, but it was done in raindrop by Sherwin Williams. And then it's got a gray glaze on it. And it's a pretty heavy glaze. Um just yeah, you can see how but it's that the looks. Van, it's the brown. What was the blue on it? It's the gray here that we use. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you my favorite products and how I like to do things, and I've done this for a long time and had a lot of issues. And I think for me, I've figured out what works the very best. Okay, so this is the glaze that I like to use if I'm using an oil-based glaze. And this one's, an, it's Artesian Effects by Gemini. Um, you can buy a Van Dyke Brown that's already mixed, or I have a mix out of this base, a uh, charcoal gray. Does that come, it comes clear? Yeah, it's clear, and then you just have them mix it for you. And I love that. Or if I'm using a water-based glaze, I like to use um, General Finishes. And they have the same, they have a clear base that you can mix as Love well. Love general finishes. Love general finishes. <laughs> especially when they do contests that we're lucky enough to win. Yes. Yes. So, okay. First thing when you glaze, always make sure and wear gloves because the first time I glazed, I didn't wear gloves and the glaze spilled all over my garage floor and I was mopping it up and stuck I on your hands had for weeks. It in my fingernails. Wouldn't touch your husband. <laughs> I looked like my dad when he used to do body work and had black in his fingernails and yeah, went on. For a you don't like that. Okay. So then also make sure that your gloves are tight enough that they're not going to get in the way. They're not going to slip off. I like to take, sometimes I'll take hair bands and put them on the edge if my gloves are too loose. Um, or just take blue tape and tape your glove on because you don't want it to be falling off at all because when you're glazing, you're going to be wiping, you know, pretty hard and whatever. Okay. So my favorite um, rags to use are these Scott's rags, and I've tried all kinds of different rags. I've tried using um, cut up t-shirts, and I've tried using paper towels, but I just feel like this brand is the best for me. It's absorbent, but it's not too absorbent, because sometimes I think paper towels are a little, or um, uh, t-shirts are too absorbent, and paper towels aren't absorbent enough. So these are my favorite, I buy them at Sam's Club. Um, you can also get them at Lowe's or Home Depot. All right. So when I mix my glaze, I or when I put it in a container, I love to use these Cool Whip containers, or I'll use like cottage cheese or something that I can throw away, and it'll stay good in here for a long time if you keep a lid on it. Eventually, it's going to get gummy, and then I'll just chuck this because nice. Yes. We don't recycle here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just. And then like when I'm between glazing, I left here last night, I had to get my son from practice and I wasn't finished. And so I just put this into my glove and it's still fresh and ready to go. If it starts to get really hard, even if you forget it and leave it out, you can 
put it into the lacquer thinner and scrub it out and it will go right back to good. Nice. So you don't need any... So we do like to recycle now. We like to recycle <laughs> paint brushes because they there cost more than cool up there containers. We there we go. All right. So on this door now, I did the back side last night. I just, when I was here, I did it and then I let them sit out for a few minutes because then it'll be pretty dry and then I, I'm okay with just laying it down after that. Um, so what you want to do is just dip your brush in the glaze. And I just use any brush. It seriously doesn't matter. And I've tried... I've tried wiping it on with rags and then wiping it off and I feel like brushing is the best way to do it and you can get in the cracks really good. Okay, so this is just the simple part. So this would be a brush on, brush off technique. I'm already getting it all over me. Which we normally would do on furniture usually. We don't normally yeah. do a brush on, brush off. And when I'm going on the edges, because I like to try to keep my area clean where I'm working, I'll just go, and my hair's bugging already. I should have I should have sacrificed and put it in a bun. No, you, you look guys. beautiful. It looks better that way. <laughs> okay, so I just go, I like to go around the edges like this. And, and then I'll just kind of try to keep it from, because the problem is if you get it onto your... Now, market, what about thinning? If you need to thin your glaze you out, thin it out, sometimes I thin it out. Um, sometimes I don't, just kind of depends. Like... This one's not thinned out, but you can thin it out with mineral spirits. So make sure that you're getting it in all the cracks because I hate when I get done and I wipe it out and you can see like a white spot. So just let your brush get real muffy. Let it get in there and it doesn't matter what your brush looks like. It doesn't matter. You can always clean it with some lacquer thinner and, and straighten it out again. And you can just go buy cheap brushes from Home Depot or, or Lowe's or Hobby Lobby or any of those places. Okay. So then I just, I try to keep it up like that. Make sure you're getting down on those. The cracks are the hardest one because that's where the glaze obviously will sit when you're done wiping. So yep. that's really the critical spot to get all that in. Yeah, and, okay. I'm you have a little bit right here. Door. On the upside, on the back side, you can't see oh, it from okay. the side. I'll get that later. I'm going to try to hurry. So Baby, you drafts the fabs. <laughs> You guys don't get too <laughs> bored here. All right. And I have to hurry so I can go on a date tonight. Shh. With who? <laughs> Do I know him? Probably a lucky guy. Okay. So there we go. This is all. Make sure we got all the cracks good. That's all brushed on. Well, not all of it. That's okay. Okay. So now that you got it brushed on, just grab your egg. I'll grab a couple here. And I always try to get a workstation that's, that's about this height, because if it's too low, you're gonna, your back is really going to start hurting. Um, and then if yeah, it's we too just high, have a cabinet on wheels, which is really handy, because we can move it, move it around the okay, shop so wherever I just, we need to go. I just come in here and I wipe around these edges first. And I'm always trying to keep it from... Getting on the back side, too. Hang on. Yeah, and this side's not... I didn't put it on here yet, but... My husband likes to, to get a little sloppy on here, so we don't like to glaze together very often. No, because it's because I hate it. <laughs> Takes too much time and too much patience. Yeah, so basically in our business, it's gotten to the point where I do the glazing, he does the painting, and he's an awesome painter, but he doesn't like to do the, the fun job that I like to do. Okay, so I'm just wiping it off now. Maybe just show half of it. Okay. And when you're wiping, try to make sure you get a, a smooth, even wipe. If you start wiping not not straight down, then you're gonna get some gouges like that. Like, I don't know if you can see that. But I didn't wipe straight down right there, and so now and you, you have can, that. You can see the spot where it And I, it if out. that happens, I just grab my brush and even it out again, because I, I don't like it when it looks kind of sloppy. Re, and then re-wipe it? And, yeah, and then just pull it straight down. You can take your finger in your rag like this and go along that edge like that if you want it to look or if you want it to look more, um, I don't know, what do you say, dirty? More rustic. Maybe. Yeah, then you don't need to do that. But like this one it is more, and I'm, I'm not trying to make a pinstripe or anything. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more, um, what's a word? Shabby? Drabby? A little, I'd, I'd probably be a little bit more rustic, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so when you're working on a flat space like this, you want to make sure that you get it all done at one time because if you don't and it starts to dry, then you're going to have weird streaks. So go back and forth. And once you've finished a spot, 
and it looks good initially, don't go back to it. Because you can go back and start looking at your piece and everything is going to start looking like that doesn't look good, but it's just because you did it. Overanalyze it. Yeah, don't overanalyze it. So just get in there, wipe it off. And these cracks, I'm just going to go down. You normally do the cracks first before you do down. the flat parts, right? Normally. Actually, I normally do the flat parts first. And then go back and, and, do, then all, go and down, then go back and do all the cracks. Do a main wipe in these big cracks. Then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to wipe out these cracks all the way around. Get the big chunks out. And then the parts that are flat and tall like this, I like to get almost all the glaze off of that. So then it stands out. So if you're looking at these doors over here that are finished, you can see that it's still a little bit deeper in here, but it's I don't have any like marks that are along these flat parts because it yeah. it's not quite as highlighted. So okay. anyhow, okay, Probably so not yeah. Good. You guys get the picture. So then you can just kind of mess with it and you can leave as much in as you want or as little in as you want. You can take your brush and go back and add some if you want to, or you can take a little bit more out. Just have fun with it. That's that's the fun of glazing. So Great. And we'll do more yeah. videos as far as products we use and some advanced techniques, huh? Yeah, so there are there are um, some techniques that I've learned going along with glazing as far as um, if you're glazing and too much is sticking on there that you don't want to stick on there, or if you're glazing in the heat and that's your only option is to glaze it's in the heat. It's drying too fast. And it's drying too fast. Like all that stuff. I'm going to try to do another video um, that goes over all that. But for now, yeah, basically I've showed you my products that I like to use and how I do it. So Good. feel free if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and message me or email us or whatever because we're happy to answer any questions that you have. So. Adios from beautiful downtown Hyde Park. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Bye, sweetie.